Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about non-carrier cervical lesion. We all know that the common cause of tooth destruction is dental caries. But yet there is another process that leads to destruction of tooth. Yes, we are talking about non-carrier cervical lesions. The non-carrier cervical lesions are defined as the loss of dental heart tissue at cemento enamel junction. Non-carrier cervical lesions uh, have a multifactorial etiology. The various contributing factors are stress, fraction, friction wear, bio-corrosion. Under uh, stress and fraction, we have endogenous and exogenous factor. Under friction wear, we have also under endogenous and exogenous factor and same with the bio-corrosion. We have endogenous and exogenous factors. So if we say it has a multifactorial condition, what do we mean? So uh, for this, to understand this, let's take an example. Suppose a person develops erosive lesion because of its habit of taking high uh, citrus fruit, citrus food items. All right, so he develops erosive lesion, and also the same person have a faulty habit of brushing teeth. So he will have both erosive and abrasive lesion, and also uh, when these two factors are added upon the faulty uh, occlusal forces or the occlusal interferences or or some uh, parafunctional habit then these lesions become erosive abrasive and effective in nature so they can occur either sequentially synergistically or alternatively the knowledge of multifactorial etiology in non carrier cervical lesion is very important so as to formulate the appropriate treatment plan Coming on to attrition, attrition is defined as the surface to structure loss resulting from direct frictional forces between the contacting teeth. So there is varying, uh, there is varying away of tooth structure as a result of tooth to tooth contact. In proximal surface attrition, we can see the presence of facet in the proximal surface. So there will be widening of the proximal contact area. The mesodestal dimension of the tooth is decreased because of which there will be drifting of the teeth in mesial direction and this gonna decrease the overall arch length and since the physiology of interdental papilla is lost so there will be difficulty in plaque control in occlusal surface situation we can see um, facets present in the occlusal surface there will be flattening of the cuspal incline or in severe cases we can see reverse cusping situation so there will be loss of vertical dimension of the tooth uh, if such changes uh, or if attrition is accomplished uh, over a short span of time and it is generalized and more severe in nature, in that case uh, there is no chances of alveolar bone to erupt occlusally so as to compensate for the occlusal tooth loss. So it will lead to vertical dimension loss and will result in overclosure during mandibular movement. And this is going to strain the stomatognathic system. And uh, it can eventually lead to TMJ problems. Another sequelae of occlusal surface situation is cheek biting. As we have discussed, uh, there is flattening of the cuspal incline. So uh, now there is tendency of the buccal mucosa or tongue to come in between the upper and lower teeth. So it will also causes the cheek biting or biting of the tongue. And uh, the, in case where we have tooth sensitivity, how do we develop? Since here the enamel surface is worn off, so underlying dentine uh, becomes sensitive and the patient develops sensitivity. And obviously these tooth are more susceptible uh, to decay. So how do we manage such cases? Uh, the palpably involved teeth should be treated endodontically and there has to be Important uh, another factor is that to check for parafunction habit and also TMJ problem should be checked. Then occlusal equilibration can be done and desensitization of the teeth can be carried out. Now coming into abrasion. Uh, abrasion it results from friction between teeth and an exogenous agent. It is also a mechanical wearing away of teeth uh, because of the friction between the teeth and an exogenous agent. All right. Uh, but this uh, mechanical process is independent of occlusion. Uh, it involves a foreign object or a substance which repeatedly contacts the tooth. 
the size and pattern of the lesion is determined by the offending object so uh, how it is defined it is defined as a surface loss of the structure resulting from direct frictional forces between the teeth and external objects or from frictional forces between the contacting teeth components in presence of an abrasive medium uh, so the toothbrush abrasion it depends on various factors like uh, the direction of brushing stroke among this the horizontal brushing stroke is very detrimental uh, the type of abrasive that we are using the size of abrasive the larger the abrasive more chances of abrasion occurs the diameter of the bristles of the teeth that we are using percentage of abrasive present in the dentifrices all of these factors can affect the abrasion resulting from toothbrush next is iatrogenic toothbrush abrasion uh, that is occurring from porcelain teeth opposite to natural teeth piker syndrome habit of eating clay it result in generalized occlusal surface abrasion certain professional habits like holding and pulling nails with the teeth or uh, cutting uh, threads with the using using the interior teeth or holding bobby pins like here in this diagram we can see notching of the central incisor leading to bobby pin ab uh, abrasion chewing tobacco uh, this will lead to generalized abrasion of the occlusal surface toothpick abrasion in the diagram here we can see abrasion resulting in the in uh, interdental area because of the unjudicious use of the toothpick pipe smoking or depression abrasion uh, here we can see abrasion present over the uh, incisor surface uh, or occlusal surface where the person ho uh, hold the pipe it will lead to both intrusion and depression resulting in uh, over the surface where the pipe sem is placed uh, so what are the characteristic signs and symptoms of toothbrush abrasion uh, they appear linear in outline and the periphery of lesions are very angular the surface is extremely smooth and polished the surrounding walls are v shaped probing or stimulating hot cold sweats elicit pain so how do you manage such case first of all you have to diagnose the cause and try to eliminate it if the abrasion lesion at non occluding surface and the lesion are shallow that is less than 0.5 mm dentin then no need to restore only the edges of the defect should be eradic eradicated to a smooth pattern but if they are deep more than 0.5 mm dentin then we have to restore it and if the teeth develop hypersensitivity then we can desensitize it by using fluoride solutions under restorative treatment in anterior tooth or facial area of posterior tooth at non occluding surface there is no need of any cavity preparation only direct tooth color material can be used under direct tooth color material we can use either composite ra uh, resin modified glass and enamel cement and in non conspicuous areas in posterior teeth metallic restoration can be done next we have erosion so erosion is loss of tooth structure resulting from chemomechanical action in absence of specific microorganism so here we have uh, loss of dental hard tissue by chemical action and they do not involve any role of bacteria it is more appropriately called as uh, corrosion as it represents surface loss caused by chemical and electrochemical action we have several intrinsic factor and extrinsic factor linked to development of erosive lesion under intrinsic factors we have certain uh, factors like gastric reflux diseases uh, chronic vomiting induced due to uh, pregnancy alcoholism or psychosomatic uh, gi disorders condition like anorexia nervosa and bulimia regurgitation and rumin uh, ruminations and under extrinsic condition environmental diet uh, under diet uh, excess intake of citrus fruit carbonated beverages in medication as aspirin ascorbic acid and occupation uh, a person work working in wine factory and has, has a function and his job is to taste wine so 
they can develop erosive lesion uh, generally the extrinsic erosion is seen uh, to occur over the labial surface of maxillary anterior teeth and they appear as a scooped out depression whereas the intrinsic erosive lesion are seen in the palatal surface of the maxillary anterior teeth and they appear as a concave depression in the entire palatal surface all right uh, there is no demarcation between the lesion and the adjacent to surface in erosive lesion the lesion surface is glazed erosion rate is same for enamel dentin and cementum and keratis lesion usually do not occur in erosive tooth surfaces all right the rate of erosion is 1 micrometer per day upper teeth are more commonly affected as compared to lower teeth and the commonly affected site is facial of cuspid and premolar and in lower anterior teeth facially uh, facial location are the more common location so uh, how do we manage the erosive lesion first we have to check for diet occlusion habits and chronic vomiting and environmental factor we have to stop all these contributing factor in order to stop the erosive lesion progression and tooth brushing should be delayed for at least 20 minutes after erosive attack and possibly up to 60 minutes so as to stop the erosive lesion the use of fluoride uh, mouth rinses and varnishes are advocated metallic restoration are advocated otherwise uh, tooth can be restored with tooth color restorative material like resin modified glass enamel cement and composite resin next we have effraction uh, so effraction is defined as a pathological loss of the surface resulting from biomechanical loading forces uh, which causes flexure and failure of the enamel and dentin at the location away from the loading all right so basically it is a wedge shaped defect in the cervical region of the teeth and it is hypothesized to be the result of tensile stresses concentrated in this area consequent to occlusal forces occurring in the occurring in some remote areas all right in the diagram here we can see where the occlusal forces are normal the forces are dissipated into the alveolar bone there is no any microflexion occurring at the cervical area but where we have excessive cyclic forces eccentric cyclic forces in that cases there is a development of tensile and compressive stresses alternatively and this gonna strain the cervical area or well, here we have the tensile stress that weakens the cervical hydroxyapatite uh, which affects uh, which result into the uh, debonding of the cervical hydroxyapatite bonds and it result into classical wedge shape defect all right so here we see uh, in the uh, lesion is typically wedge shaped with sharp line angles and they affect the buccal labial cervical areas of the teeth the lesion are deep narrow v-shaped notch the magnitude of the tissue loss depends on the size duration direction frequency and location of the force so how do we manage such cases uh, abstraction is basically a theoretical concept because uh, since it has not proven by appropriate clinical evidence all right so uh, so how do we manage such cases we have to adjust uh, the bite we have to remove the uh, inappropriate occlusal contacts and reduce the heavy uh, contacts and premature contacts although the effectiveness of such treatment is not supported by the evidence but uh, the adjustment must be carried out in order to remove only the interferences but we have to preserve the original point of centric occlusion all right and then after this we can restore the tooth, it with tooth color restorative material now uh, coming on to the difference characteristic difference between all the cervical lesion that is erosion abrasion and effraction and erosive lesion is seen in both lingual and facial surface whereas abrasion are most commonly seen in facial and same with the effractive lesion 
the margins are smooth in erosion lesion whereas in abrasion and infraction they are sharp the surface is smooth and polished in erosion lesion whereas in abrasion it is smooth but it is scratched and in abrasion it is rough and may have a corrugated appearance or we can see we can notice micro fractures in abrasive lesion the characteristic shape of erosion lesion is saucer shaped or u or disc shape it is wedge shape and uh, in abrasion it is also single or overlapping wedge shape all right so how do we uh, plan the whole treatment process so under this we have to manage any acute condition first of all managing acute condition means uh, we have to look for any uh, emergency like uh, which ranges from flattening of the cuspal inclines or uh, removing any faulty occlusal interferences and next we have preventive features under this we have fluoride application desensitization therapy dietary counseling and beverage modification habit changes splint therapy where the para function habit is confirmed sealant restoration so as to stop the dentin hypersensitivity and to prevent the progression of the non carious cervical lesion stabilization of any underlying dental pathology under this we have, we can carry out carious control process removal of any hopeless tooth next phase is monitoring and maintenance uh, this is very important uh, uh, factor and it is very challenging task to monitor and maintain uh, the non carious cervical lesion okay so here uh, basically we have, our aim is to prevent the further pathological wear so as so that the wear rate becomes ultimately it return to a physiological wearing away of teeth all right so our aim is to diagnose um, the carious uh, the non carious cervical lesion as early as possible and prevent it further progression so we can take sequential clinical photographs or by means of periodic study cast after 6 to 12 uh, months interval we can monitor the changes so uh, these are all steps that, that we can take to formulate the appropriate treatment plan for non carious cervical lesions these are the references thank you